Hey guys, I'm Drew the Helium Noob. Thank you for watching my videos. Today I'll be going through part five, installing the Rack Wireless Hotspot Miner V2. Before I jump into my setup, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the alerts. That way you get all my content as I release it. Also, if you truly like my videos, please hit that like button. I have a lot of useful links and information posted up on my website, heliumnoob.com, so go ahead and check that out. Also, if you're gonna purchase any of the Rack Wireless accessories that I show in the videos, please use the links in my description and feel free to use my discount code, Helium New. That way you can save yourself a little bit of money on your order. Today, we are gonna start in my IT room and I'll show you how to hook up the PoE injector and then how I ran an ethernet cable from the injector to the exterior of my house. And then we'll actually go outside, jump on a ladder and uh, show you how we install the miner in the actual enclosure. So let's go, noobs. All right, guys, so we're in my IT room. Nothing spectacular, it's just what I call it. Um, so I have a non-POE switch. That's just kind of where I put all my security cameras and everything. But uh, I have a non-POE switch. Um, and then, uh, you know, this is where we're going to install the POE injector for the, for the miner. Um, now, something I want to uh, kind of clear up real quick, and um, I've always tried to not jump into that, you know, what you can and can't do type thing um, with all this. Um, I try to be more of, hey, this is how I did it, or here's how you can do it. Um, if you've seen my other videos, hopefully I've portrayed that. Um, but what happened was, is when these things first started coming out, um, everybody was saying, hey, if you go to the manufacturer's website, it's going to tell you that, you know, the, 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 the miners, they don't support PoE. Um, now, when I started releasing all these videos and everything, that was the one real big backlash that I got from a lot of people was that, hey, you're telling us that we can and the manufacturer's telling us that we can't. Um, again, I don't try to get into the what you can and can't do type thing, but this is one thing I can tell you that you can do. Um, in the traditional sense, you can't, which is what I'm going to explain kind of the difference, right? So the traditional, in the traditional sense, basically what happens is if I had a PoE switch and a PoE device, I could run an Ethernet cord between the two and have power and Ethernet at the device, right? If you try to do that with the any of the miners, Bobcat, you know, any of them, uh, rack, whatever. If you try to do that, the port on the miner doesn't support PoE. That's what they mean, right? But since we have PoE injectors and PoE splitters, and these things run off a really small amount of power, we can actually power them with PoE. It's a little bit different. It's not just an, it's not a direct shot right to it, but we're going to install some additional hardware to make it happen, right? So this is why I can confidently tell you that PoE does work with the miners. So let's jump in, right? So here's your, your PoE uh, injector. This comes with a cord. Now this comes with the enclosure kits from Rack. Um, I've shown them in, in my installation videos with you know the, with the different uh, uh, different enclosures. Um, but here's how we actually install it, right? So you're gonna just run your power cord to it. One side gets the power cord. And then plug it in. Okay. Now we're plugged in and we have a the you know the LEDs lit up so we know we have power. Um, then you have L you have LAN and then you have PoE side, right? LAN is your local area network, which is gonna be your switch. Um, so this does not come with the kits from Rack, but you basically just need a uh, you know a little patch cord, a little extra cord. Uh, so we're gonna plug that into the LAN side. And then you plug this into your switch or your router or whatever it is that you have. Okay. Now we have power and ethernet to the, call it a box, right? To the injector. Then what we do is we take the cord that we, the, the ethernet cord that we've ran outside and we're gonna plug that into the PoE side. Okay. So now that's, now that's hooked up. So this cord going out to the miner now has power and ethernet, right? So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna real quick show you how I ran the ethernet cable. It's just bundled here because I had some extra. I'm gonna show you how I ran it outside. And then we're gonna go outside and I'll show you how to complete the, the connections on the other side with the splitter to make the PoE work. So again, I'm not trying to you know jump down that, that rabbit hole with everybody, but I can tell you for a fact that using an injector and a splitter works. Um, that's the difference between the two. One is the traditional sense, one is using a splitter, okay? So there's the injector we just put in. Now, again, my cable, um, I had a bunch of extra, so I just kind of coiled it up and zip tied it to some other cables I had hanging here. Um, but so it's coiled up. And then what I did is just ran it up 
middle of the 2x4, and eventually have drywall and stuff in here. Um, but so it runs up and over, and then right along the joist here, you can kind of see it go down, okay, all the way down. And then once we get over there, it takes a 90 and it goes that way. So let's run over to there real quick. All right, so you can see the 90 here, goes over this wall, pops back out here. Now again, it's the black cord hanging there. The gray ones are just some other internet cords that I have. And then what I did is I ran it all the way down across the joist. Now about every third or fourth joist, I put in a zip tie um, that has a little hole in it for a screw. And then that way, you know, you screw it into the joist and then you zip tie it to the, to the screw basically. Um, but we run it all the way down. It's all the way down the house, and I gotta watch out for some of these landmines and toys that the kids leave all over the place. And we get to the corner. Now on this side, if you'll notice, right here is another uh, bundled coil. Now what that's for is I left myself a little bit extra there on this side too, just in case I ever have to reroute where I put the cord going through the basement. Um, I've had. In, in, in other times I've had it where I've had to move something and I didn't have enough cord and it's a pain in the butt so I always leave myself a little bit of extra um, that way I can move it if I have to like when I'm finishing the basement or anything if I got to go through a different wall or something um, but anyway so that's that kind of coils up and then it just goes through uh, the belly joist which is about right here and then that goes outside so from the inside of the house that we we're just looking at this is where the ethernet cord comes outside um, comes through the the wall there got it cocked and um, that way it doesn't uh, get any water into the basement and then just below it down to the right I've showed it a few times but there's the um, the ground connector so the ground connector and the Ethernet cord uh, run up into the corner trim it actually goes all the way up the peak all the way up to the top so what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw the ladder up we're gonna get up there we're gonna make these last few connections on the um, on the hotspot miner and uh, get this thing cooking. Uh, hopefully we can uh, start mining some HNT. Hey right, guys, so we're up at the top now. So what I've done is I kind of jammed a box in between here. There's a lot of little screws, so I figured I might need something to kind of catch anything if I drop it. Um, but real quick, if you look up, the ethernet cord and the ground come out here. The ground goes up to the antenna. The ethernet cord loops through down the back up in the bottom here um, now the antenna cable also comes down obviously from the antenna and then down into the top and then I have a ground um, running from here up and then it connects right right up in here runs down so I've shown that in some of my previous videos but just wanted to kind of give you a recap of the whole thing of how it works so Right now I got two screws in here, so I'm gonna pop those out and then we're gonna get this bad boy installed. All right, so now one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get this off here because we gotta hook the screws in through the back for the miner. So we're gonna back these little screws out. Now this screwdriver has, is like a magnetic screwdriver, so that helps the cause suggest that you try to use one when you're doing this minimize the amount of dropping going on All right, so now we're gonna we're gonna hook the miner to the aluminum rack here that goes in the um, enclosure. And something I noticed, I was puzzled at first because I thought I lost some screws. But you actually remove the screws from the miner itself, and then we're gonna put them in. Um, now I'm already plugged in, so I could sink and get it ready. Um, so I'm gonna leave it plugged in as long as possible. But basically, when you're done installing it, it's gonna look like this. Okay, so we're gonna remove these four screws, place it here put the screws in from the back side and then we'll end up taking the antenna off ethernet cable out and the USB-C out because we have PoE injected up to the enclosure 
So let's pop these screws out real quick, get that hooked up, and then we'll run back outside and, and get it up into the enclosure. Alright, so we got the four screws out, so now we'll line this up here, like so, okay, flip it over, realign the four screws, and get this thing mounted up. Like so. All right, so now that we got the uh, the miner mounted onto the aluminum cage here, so what we'll do is this, I get your antenna cable out of the way, but we're gonna get this set in and mount it up here. Again, one, two at the bottom, and then there's a third one over here. So let me find these screws again. And my screwdriver. Screws. And let's do this top one first. that one's on and we do the two bottom ones should make it a little easier to line it up and whatnot so that one there then my last one here So the first connection, now that we got that mounted, the first connection that we're gonna make is gonna be the antenna. So again, this is the little feeder line that goes into the N-type female hub up here. Um, hub here comes in through. So now we'll get this kind of hooked up on here like this. Make sure that's down nice and tight. Okay. And then we got our PoE, right? So this is the splitter. So this line is now powered from the, what I was showing you earlier, powered from the, the router um, in my IT room. And then now on the back side, we got to reduce that 48 volts back down to the, the three and a half that it needs um, for the USB, so USB-C. So we're going to get this kind of laid in here and we're going to plug it in there and then your Ethernet connection goes on the bottom here. Okay, now that should all be connected up. And then what I'm going to try to do is get this kind of 
um, connected down here. So let's see what we can fashion for that. to come back through. Get this kind of hooked in. And that's that. So again, there's your PoE miner, Ethernet cord, USB-C antenna. Now we've made all the connections. Let's see if our little red light is on. It's on the top. I don't know if you can see it, but it is it is on. And then if we get down real low, we might be able to see the connectivity lights. And it's kind of bright outside, but yep, connectivity lights are on. So now we're all set up. So we'll put the cover back on. And then uh, that's about a wrap. All right, so we got these screws, plus the couple that were left. Uh, I think I put them down in here. Oh, I lied, that's the wrong pack. That's an extra pack I had. So here's all the screws that we need down in here, and these are all gonna come through the back side. And we'll connect the front onto it. So let's grab a couple right now just to get started. Alright guys, so that wraps up the install of the uh, Rack Wireless Hotspot Miner V2. Um, we just put it in there, we got the cover, everything's good to go. Um, so again, I got the Rack Wireless um, outdoor enclosure, and then I also have the Rack Wireless 8 dBi antenna up on top of the pole. Um, now I have, uh, the last video I only had uh, one or two going that way, now I have uh, about an additional two or three that are kind of in between me and the next guy so they're starting to make their way this way i'll be on the outskirts so there won't be much more coming uh, on the other way um, but again i do have a few three or four head out towards canada that uh, that hopefully i'll connect with with that 8 dbi antenna um, at any rate thanks thanks for joining hit that like button hit that subscribe button um, helps me out with the algorithm greatly appreciate it and then again guys if you are going to buy any of these things that i've shown these videos Follow the link in my description to Rack Wireless's store. And then if you use Helium Noob, H-E-L-I-U-M-N-O-O-B, all one word, Helium Noob, get yourself a little discount um, off of everything you buy from Rack Wireless. So thank you guys uh, for joining in, and we'll catch you on the next one.